Achilles tendon rupture, respect the skin during the surgery and not neglect the closing the parathenon carefully. Parathenon is very important. Uh, anamnesis and physical examination. Anamnesis, the patient usually tell the doctor someone or something kick backside of the lower leg. This story is typical and diagnostic. Physical exam, filling the gap over the rupture and positivity of the Thompson test is very specific and sensitive. Now let's look. Now let's do this uh, test, Thompson test. Uh, as you see, this test is positive. When we squeeze this cut and uh, ankle not uh, move, as you see. And also, there is one gap here. This gap, I should turn the rupture. Indications Acute rupture of the ischial tendon is a competitive or high high level athlete. Acute rupture of the ischial tendon in which treatment has been delayed. Exact length of the delay that requires operative intervention is debatable. In this uh, situation, there is no consensus. But delays beyond approximately two weeks generally increase the benefits of surgery. In the event that treatment has been extensively delayed, just like six or eight weeks. Surgical repair of ruptured ischial tendon may require additional augmentation with fascial turn down, flaps or flexor hallucis longus tendon transfer. Contraindications Poor skin or soft tissue condition in the area of desired surgical repair. Smoking or risk of wound healing problems, diabetes, peripheral vascular di diseases, heavy tobacco use, perioperative preparation. These are uh, standard as you know. Evaluate the patients and assess the benefits of surgical versus non-operative treatment. Discuss both surgical and non-surgical treatment with patient. And if a calcaneal av avulsion fracture is suspected, please take, radio take radiograph and while uh, an appropriate history and physical examination can reliably identify most ischial tendon ruptures, consider obtaining MRI diagnosis is in doubt or also for medical legal issues. Tips and perks. Perioperatively, pay close attention to normal plantar flexion resting position and turn off the control of the foot and ankle in order to reproduce. This is the best possible when repairing the ruptured site. Tips and perks. Use a great care handling the skin and soft tissue during the procedure to minimize the incidence of post-operative wound healing problems. However, since post-operative wound healing problems remains a risk even with medical technique, this possibility should be reviewed with patients pre-operatively. Use medial incision. This avoids the sural nerve laterally and allows better access to plantaris, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digital longus tendons that are occasionally required for augmentation of the repair. Tips and pearls. Make sure all stir nuts in, in the repair are, are deeply buried and do not lie superficial under the wound closure. Carefully close the parathenon in order to relieve tension on the skin. The most important uh, issue is in this is a surgical technique is parathenon. First identify parathenon and when you uh, at the end of the surgery carefully close the parathenon. It's mandatory and crucial. What to avoid? Avoid excessive undermining or undermining or subcutan tissue dissection superficial the parathenon layer. Attempt to avoid making a reconstructed tendon either too long or too short. The goal is to repair tendon so it returns as close to as its normal length as possible. Operative technique. Uh, Perioperatively, you, you can make sure and make a Thompson test. And uh, after successful induction of anesthesia, put the patient prone. Uh, evaluate normal plantar flexion resting position. Tone of control lateral foot and ankle. It's, it will be guide for the injured side. And this tension, you must restore this tension just the op normal side, opposite side. Yes, this is very important. Uh, I would like to em emphasize the Thompson test for this very diagnostic test. Now let's look. Now let's look this uh, test Thompson test. Uh, as you see, this test is positive. When we squeeze this cut and ankle uh, not move, as you see. And also, there is one gap here, this gap, actually, tendon rupture. We usually, uh, suture technique, we use just like modified crack or suture technique. Notice the uh, photo, I would like to describe this. In operative technique, we use just like uh, also this very universal, longitudinal, medial aspect of uh, aspect of the ischial tendon centered just like make a long incision along the medial aspect of the ischial tendon over the site of the rupture sharply dissect straight down not try to make uh, 
dissection of the subcutan tissue and identify underlying paratenon layer. This is crucial. And next time you will close this paratenon layer. This will be very important. For that reason, you must identify paratenon layer and directly look inside the paratenon. Identify the rupture site, clean the hematome, irrigate the hematome, they make the debridement of hemorrhagic and hypertrophy tenosynovium and if necessary, debrid excessive the fried ends and ruptured tendon. If augmentation uh, is necessary, you can use plantar tendon. Unfortunately, unfortunately, everybody don't have plantar tendon, but if you are lucky, you will find and you can make augmentation. We usually make this and this will give very great strength and a smooth surface. You can use this plantar tendon just like uh, to establish a smooth surface. As you see, uh, this modified constitute technique we usually use this technique after the repair of the actual tendon very um, carefully close paratenon please after the repair ensure uh, the response to Thompson test you will be sure next time and sleep peacefully uh, after the surgery okay. if we check the Thompson test Thompson test is now functioning as you see now tendon is uh, intact and functioning please notice that uh, plantar flexion of the ankle, okay?